Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, we're going to look at analyzing polynomials with the graphing calculator. Uh, our instructions say, in the following example, use a graphing calculator to sketch the polynomial. Label local maximum points, local minimum points, y-intercept, and roots. Note that the x and y axes can be scaled differently. All right, so uh, these are the things that we need to find. I've gone ahead and, and written these out. Um, because before we start actually making our sketch, it, it'll be a good idea to write these things down, find these things with our calculator, write them down, and then make our sketch uh, accordingly. So let's pull up our graphing calculator. I've gone ahead and put our polynomial here, our cubic, in uh, y1, in y equals here. Um, we know, uh, let's talk about this thing for a minute. We know that we have a cubic function, so we're expecting three roots. Uh, we know that it's a negative cubic, so it's going to have an approximate shape like this, right? But from our previous discussions on polynomials, because the end behavior will be up to the left and down to the right, being that it's a negative cubic. So we have one, we're looking for one local minimum right there, and one local maximum right there. And uh, we're going to, we expect to have three total roots, like we said, because it's a cubic and of course one y-intercept so those are the things uh, that we are looking for so let's use our calculator to help us find that so I'm gonna graph uh, I've got a standard window here negative 10 to 10 in the x direction and in the y direction and you can see the polynomial we've got a root here a root here and a root here but this local maximum is somewhere off the screen up here and the local minimum is somewhere off the screen down here so we know the local minimum setting the window okay setting the window is the key here and we so we know the local minimum is somewhere in between uh, negative 1 and negative 10 on the x-axis so we can go in our table to help us find the proper y minimum value to set for our window so let's go on our table and we see a y value of negative 336, negative 455, negative 537. Okay, so it's topping out uh, somewhere in between negative 6 and negative 8. We can see that. So let's try a y minimum value of, say, negative 600. So negative 600. I think I will also go in here and change our x minimum to be say negative 15 because remember negative 10 we we're right at the left edge so let's change that let's go in and let's go ahead and graph it again and uh, so there's our local minimum so that's good our local maximum is occurring somewhere between an x value of say 0 and 2 so let's go on our table and find uh, a good value for our y maximum for our window so we can see that so there's 100 is where uh, so it's topping out between negative 1 and 1 somewhere. So let's uh, set that, say, at 150 for a y maximum and see how that looks. We can always adjust it later. All right, that'll work. We can uh, see that pretty well there. Okay, so um, first of all, let's find the local max right here. So that's going to be second trace. Most of these things are going to be in this calculate menu, which we get to under second trace. We're going to use the maximum part. Okay, we can either on left bound, we can just hit enter right here. That's fine. Or we could type in an X coordinate. I'm going to, that looks fine for a left bound. Remember, I want to find this local maximum value. So I need to pick a left bound that's left of the maximum and a right bound that is right of the maximum. So left bound looks good there. For right bound, I'm going to type in an x value of 2 because I know that that is past it. For the guess, I'm just going to hit enter. And here we have it. So uh, let's pull this screen in here so that we can have that ready to work with in just a second. All right. Um, let's find the local minimum next so second trace uh, minimum option three for left bound let's see negative one two three four five six seven eight 
9. Negative, I'll, I'll just put in negative 10. I know that's left of it. That'll work. Negative 10. And I know about negative 2 is certainly to the right of that local minimum value. So that will work. Guess, just hit enter. And the calculator found it for us. So let's bring that over. Okay, so there's our minimum value. And then let's see what else do we need we need the y-intercept that's easy that's just in our table when x is zero uh, so that's i'm going to bring that one in the table and let's go ahead and circle that that's right here our y-intercept occurs when the x-coordinate is zero okay and lastly we need the three roots so we're going to remember this trick when we worked with quadratics. We're going to graph y equals 0. So we're basically graphing the x-axis, a horizontal line right on top of the x-axis. Now we can graph and find the intersection uh, one, two, three times. We could also use this 0 option right here, uh, option 2, and that would find it using a left and right bound, but uh, I'm just going to use the intersection this time. So. Uh, first curve, that's fine. Second curve, that's fine. And for a guess, um, I could type in a number, but let's just arrow over here. Uh, right there works. Enter. Okay, there's one. Let's bring that over. I'll put that right over here. So there's one, zero, one root. And let's, this time, just so I can, I'll show you, let's use the zero option under second trace. That's option two, zero. So left bound for this zero, we just want to get left of it. We're going to find this middle zero now. So anywhere left of it's fine. Enter. Right bound, I can type in a number, or just arrow to past it to the right. That works. And then enter again. And there is the second root. Okay, and we just have one more to go. Let's bring that calculator back up and let's do intersection again on this one. So first curve, enter, second curve, enter, guess. Let's just arrow close to it, hit enter, and there we have our third zero. All right, so now let's just write all these out. So the local max was, we'll round, uh, point two six five two works. Uh, comma one hundred two point eight two two one hundred two point eight two two. Put that in parentheses. The local min was at negative six point five nine nine. Negative six point five nine nine. Comma. Negative 543.896. Negative 543.896. All right. Uh, the roots occurred at uh, the leftmost root. We'll write them left to right. I'm just going to write them with commas in between. So negative 9.775. 9.775, comma. Uh, then the middle root, let's see, where was that one? All right here, negative 1.467, negative 1.467. And the rightmost root, where was that one at? Um, that one, where is it? All right here, uh, 1.743. 1.743. As ordered pairs, of course, these are the x coordinates, and our y coordinate would be 0. Uh, y intercept was right here in the table. Uh, when x is 0, y was 100. So we can write that as, as an ordered pair, 0, 100. Just like that. All right, so we have found all of the information they wanted us to find. So now we can move on to the rest of the examples, except that we need to graph it. Okay, I forgot about that. So we're supposed to sketch a graph. So let's um, sketch this thing. All right. So um, exactly how it looks is, is not uh, of critical importance. 
I'm just just like this will work okay and we need to uh, technically since we're drawing the sketch let's go ahead and label everything so this is our uh, y-axis here x-axis here um, we have a root there there and there we have um, my uh, maximum and my y-intercept occur really close to each other so I've got to put two dots there and then we've got the local min right here okay so we have a root at negative 9.775 and I'm, I'm just gonna write that right there I'm not gonna write the ordered pair uh, then we had negative 1.467 negative 1.467 right there and then we had our third root at 1.743 uh, we have a y-intercept at 0 comma 100 right there and then we had that local max so since this is so close I'm gonna write uh, the local max was um, we'll use an order pair here 0. 0.2652 comma 102.822 and then we have our local min way down here so we'll label that with words local min and that ordered pair was negative 6.599 comma negative 543 43.896 all right so let's see that looks like everything that we needed and now we can move on to the rest of the examples all right, here we are with the rest of these examples. So uh, example two, it, well, it says use f of x from example one. So the, the function that we're working with uh, already. So it says evaluate f of 3.2. So we're using our calculator here. So this means evaluate when x is 3.2. So what is the value of the function, the y value, when x equals 3.2? That's easy enough with our calculator. And for that, we could use our table and table set and set up our table to start at 3.2. Uh, so I'll show you that way. And go on our table and that would be the y value would be negative 353 okay uh, the other way to do it is on your graph go to second trace where all of those other options are and choose option one which is value and it will flash x equals for you and you just type in 3.2 hit enter and it will give you uh, the same answer that we found in our table negative 352.992 uh, this our table rounded it so our graph is actually uh, going to be a little more exact in this case so uh, we'll just use that all right so I'm just going to uh, hopefully this calculator screen fits in here and we'll just leave that right there there we go uh, give the intervals over which f of x is less than zero okay well here's where our work earlier will pay off because where it's where our y value f of x remember is is like y so it's where is y less than zero well that's everything below the x-axis so all of this area right here all right so all the way down to negative infinity there so there are really two intervals uh, where that occurs so uh, going back up here and looking at the roots that we found um, that's going to be between uh, an x value of negative 9.775 and negative 1.467. That's one interval. And then the other interval is from 1.743 to positive infinity. Uh, notice that's where this changes from being the y values being positive to being negative is right where it's crossing the x-axis right at those x-intercepts, those roots. All right, so if we write those out it's negative nine in interval it's asking for an interval so we're going to use interval notation so we'll just around these um, a little bit so negative 1.467 that was one interval and the second interval which we could use a 
Um, I'm just going to write them uh, in two sets of parentheses. Um, I'm not going to put a union or anything. So 1.7428, 1.7428, and comma, and that went on to infinity. All right, so that works right there. So two intervals. All right, next, where is f of x equal to 250? So that means where is y equal to 250? All right, so we can find that with our calculator. We're going to go in here and in y2, I'm going to graph y equals 250. We can then graph that. All right, and we are not seeing it, right? We have a horizontal line at 250, so let's think about this. Let's check our uh, y max. Look, our y max is only 150, so we need to change this now to 300. So if you don't see it, remember, you need to set your window. So now we'll see 250 coming across here. And there's the line, horizontal line y equals 250. So let's just find that intersection. Second trace, option 5, first curve, enter, second curve, enter. Guess I'm going to type in negative 8, and there it is. So a nice part about this is we can just bring the calculator window in, and that answers it. All right. And then where is f of x equal to 0? Well, that is going to be where y is equal to 0. So that's all of our roots, remember, from earlier. So all of our roots here um, will uh, answer that. Okay, so that was um, all of the roots, and that's when x was equal to negative 9.775, um, negative 1.467, and lastly 1.7428. All right, so that's it for this lesson. And uh, using your calculator here, you won't have any trouble uh, handling these. It's just setting the window and then uh, remembering how which options you need to use to help you uh, find these answers with your calculator. All right, I will see you in the next video.